Man has often wondered, if you place a bunch of strangers in a basement, what will they do together? And the answer, quite frankly, is they'll make a video game about killing each other. Very profitable. It's kind of like Big Brother, but with more violence and many more anime eyes. So, we're back at Angels of Death. If you guys don't know who I am, I am Solomon Rambling. If you didn't know that but still came upon this video, well, welcome, person. I am glad you found me on the Google search engines or YouTube search engines because that is something special. I still need to, like, search for my full name in order to find my website. And if you found this video, that means I've made it big. Or no one's making any videos on Angels of Death. So, that or you could be a fanatic and you're watching everything. Whoever you are, just know I treasure you as a person and I'm really confused why you're here. Let's get to the game anyway. We find ourselves back and we're following the trail of Dr. Danny, the individual who has a fetish for eyes, or as he likes to call them lovingly, peepers. Because that's how doctors talk. But we're going to try to find him and we also need to get medicine for Zach. Theoretically, we're trying to get, I don't know, a, a clotting thing to make sure he doesn't bleed as much. But I'm pretty sure he's been bleeding for the better half of one hour. So he's kind of dead. And right now, like, he got just got bit by snakes. And so he's bleeding some more. Yep, and there he got bloodied again. So Zach's kind of like a superhero. That or his daily diet consists of him swallowing people's blood and like meshing it with his system of some sort. So one or the other. But look, the white snake was killed. And that's not a euphemism for anything. That's just the white snake that tried to attack Ray. So everything's good. We're fine. And we got to see these people. They have such life inside them except for Ray who's dead but it's not really dead anymore because she has hope but let's talk a little bit about how everyone's dying and let's continue get to the next room run from the snakes which randomly appear thank god they don't have arms to open doors so he's continuing to bleed profusely while the piano tinkles in the background they move forward but he fell. So we're getting into another little monologue of how he's dying, but he needs more to take him down because he's a monster and no one can kill him except himself. Which ironically is what really is happening here because he was the one that slashed open his stomach. Go figure. That's what love do does to you. So. Oh, now there's... A little question of what's going on. Don't worry, they solve it pretty darn easily. Yep, we know this. This has all been created. One of the things I guess I see with this is, again, since it's re was released episodically, I'm assuming that the creator had to review many of these tired concepts that he saw. And or that he used previously. So I asked to specify that Zach won't kill her until he's saved and that he want that she wants him to kill her because of a, a him saying that he swore to God to kill her. But it's a lot of rehashing old story and it doesn't really do anything that great or at least when it's combined into one long game. It's like, "Oh my god, he could have cut out probably two hours of this game and it'd be better for it. I guess I'm just really salty right now. Just need to calm down and focus on what is right in front of me. Which is, sadly, them still talking about blood and crap. Oh, there's no God in this world. What do you mean? That's right, it's amazing her unfallible attempt to believe in God is broken by someone saying there is no God. You know, that, if only that's how religion works, 
then things would be all hunky dory, I think. But that's kind of bad. You gotta have faith, people. You gotta believe in what you believe, regardless of if it's a god, it's some kind of cat monster, or even if it's like the lamp in your living room. You just have to believe that the light will show you the way. Anyway, get off a tangent on this. Oh my god, they're still talking. Uh, this is kind of how I felt like when I'm playing it too. Except now I gotta relive it. And I'm kind of proud of my turnaround time. I recorded this on Sunday and I'm watching it now. I actually recorded it on Monday. Only a two day turnaround. Oh, good job, Solomon. You got your life together. Well, as much as he can for choosing to play Angels of Death for a Let's Play. Anyway. So, we're going to take this dirty knife from Zach, the endlessly bleeding creature. He's like the opposite of a hemophiliac. No, he's not. He's just a person with a lot of blood. Whatever. That was a joke. It wasn't good. Just leave it be. But the purple rain comes back. And there's going to be more hallucinogens as we continue. Keep going, Ray. What can you do? We've got a little puzzle solving in, in the sense. It's not puzzle solving. It's just really putting part one to part two. It's like if you consider an Ikea piece of furniture puzzle solving. It's not. It's just written in weird Swedish words that you can't understand, but the pictures are good enough for you to understand and make it. I guess in this sense, Lego is probably a harder puzzle than this game. So we're going to put that knife down to dip it. Oh, and we had a purple strobe light dance right there. Yeah, it worked. The knife. Ah, oh, it's all right. I'm so glad she's concerned about it. But for this next one, we need to make sure things conduct electricity. And so we're going to put our knife on there. Player two is still playing God of War right now. It's at the point where it's a sex scene and there's boobs. I don't really play any God of War games, so I hear that this is like an ongoing factor that there's sex involved. I, I really don't understand that game. Like, Kratos is a total asshat. And like, women are like, let's have sex with you because you make me feel like a woman. Or I at least assume that's what's going on. I can't hear any of the dialogue with my headphones on. And this is steadily becoming a let's play of God of War 3 than it is Angels of Death. But, I don't know. There's just something captivating about watching a cutscene involving boobies. It's like it was marketed towards male gamers. Oh my god, that's why it sold so well. Violence, boobs... And a strong male influence that can teach future children how to be absolute misogynistic arses. Such a fantastic thing. I'm still waiting for a quick time event for the whole sexual seduction thing to get going. And it's going to another scene with even more women that are coming out. Everyone's really well chested. Oh, yep. There goes the cut, the quick time events. And they're viewing these two girls off on the side and they're like admiring him oh my god what the heck is wrong with this game why did anyone see this with any sort of critical acclaim they're like yelling at bayonetta for being very misogynistic and this game what the heck she just had to start twiddling the control stick for some quick time event what the heck were they doing there this is kind of horrifying but you know what just goes to show, that's how you win at sex, people. Press buttons and twiddle like the, there's no tomorrow. Oh, hey, Angels of Death is still going on. Let's see. We're in a cathedral. Probably shouldn't be talking about nudity and sex in a cathedral. I think that's somewhat blasphemous. So, we'll continue focusing on this. Oh, yep. We need to get the medicine. Gotta get the medicine. What... Oh my god, the quick time event is still going on over there. This is ridiculous. And they're talking. Ooh, look at him go. He's sized like a minotaur. 
Oh, I'm just feeling just exalted up the guy. Oh, sorry. So, talking to the preacher who's going to do his magic. Uh, my guinea pig's underneath my feet. I don't want to hit you, dude, and you're probably going to start chewing on my socks right now. I have a guinea pig. He is unique, spirited animal. He wanders my place like he is lord of the land. And when he wants pets, he bites my shoes and my feet. But I have a job to do. I need to create this video. Isn't that right, Einstein? What are you doing eating my box, you little piece of crap? Anyway, get back to this. Who? She's pointed a knife at him. That's not the best thing to do. Okay. His body is a battered, tattered, foul mess. Oh, you foul demon witch. <laughs> I didn't know this was the Salem witch trials. We're channeling some crucible in this. Everyone get out your theater knowledge and let's have a good time. You know... This whole sex thing is taking so long. I'm wondering if she failed at the mission. Oh my goodness. She just said that she did fail. What happens if you fail a sex mission? Like, how does that kill you? I don't know. Or do they just go for it multiple times? Who knows? But, looks like they're all done. She was utterly ravaged. And she got a trophy for it. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. Just the endless possibilities of gaming trophies and accomplishments. That's that's unique. Okay. I promise. We're, we're just doing Angels of Death right now. That's, that's it. Angels of Death. Focus. Very solemn game. We're going to be put on trial. No one saw this coming. And so already, let's make some prediction of what's going to happen. It's going to pull on the three other bosses from the other three floors, and they're going to say how oh, she's such an awful person, and they're going to shout out witch over and over again, and she'll be burned at the stake. Like, I already know what happens, but that was what I was thinking, I think. It's not like it takes a psychic to figure this out. I'm pretty sure anybody who played it up to this point would get it. If you didn't, I'm happy for your ability to be surprised. That is awesome. But I think for the large majority of people, it's meh. I apologize if my voice is fading in and out. The, the guinea pig has begun to start eating my socks. So I'm trying not to scream into the microphone. Okay. This part was particularly agonizing for me because they all get their little monologue and they fight with each other and all their stuff. And we know what the end result's going to be. They didn't reveal anything special. And as I referenced in my other video, essentially what they're going to do is preach their own ideology that she's an awful person. And you already know that all this is an hallucination, that these characters don't actually exist. So she's probably speaking it herself, or this is the preacher's doing. God dang it. Guinea pig, I will push you back in the cage if I need to. I am working. This is very serious. My livelihood depends on this not at all. But I don't know how to splice video segments or audio together, so I gotta focus. Focus. Okay. So we're gonna disappear into bubbles. Aw, oh, thank you, buddy. You went back to your cage. You go eat some hay. Guinea pigs are fascinating creatures. Most of them are really stupid and have no personality, but ours is pretty cool. I like him. I think he's a good pet. I don't really recommend guinea pigs. I say rabbits. That's better. Okay, we're going to go back to evidence. What are we presenting? Oh, I was cast out of my position as a condemner by her hand, and I was torturing her, but at some point... She messed it up. She just crippled me as a stature, as a torturer. And it was so awful. She humiliated me and tricked me. And oh my God, how awful is that? She's 
cruel. She shot me and I was gonna kill her first. Not fair. Ugh. So that's essentially good old Kathy's testimony right here. What I really like, and you'll see it more, is that whenever they jump, the game slows down incredibly, as if it's like taking every single ounce of Nintendo Switch's energy just to power this spectacle. Because, I don't know about you, but this is graphics at its hardcore -iest. So, this is a witch we're dealing with. Ooh, water torture. So we're going to get some level of interesting visuals each time but already her testimonial has set the stage for how this looks we're going to have each character say something ask Ray to respond and then put her in a situation where she is tortured somewhere at least looks like that's going to happen so sit in and get ready for all this people I will let you Listen to this for a bit. I'll be quiet as we look things on. I'm still watching God of War. I said I wasn't going to do that. Man, back to here. Oh, let's sum this up for you guys if you don't want to listen or you're just listening and not watching. He says, we were so alike. I just wanted to be her friend. She wanted death. I was going to give her a death. I liked burying bodies. She wanted to be buried in the ground. You know? We work together like two peas in a pot or two skeletons in a grave that one grave digger forgot that they needed to be in separate coffins. So I was wondering if she'd be my friend and she was stubborn and said no. And so when I tried to kill her and she said no, I tried to kill her again. She still said no and then she killed me. That's not how consent works. If you say no, it actually means yes. And if this sounds really disturbing to you, this is unfortunately exactly what he did. And unfortunately, what our system doesn't quite seem to understand in terms of consent is that no means no. Hmm. That's another argument for a different time. There's a lot of good videos on consent on YouTube if you ever have an issue with that. Oh, are you still going? I already gave the Cliff Notes version. You gotta be done, whatever your name is. I forgot to even look. Oh, but there we go. Oh, huh, oh, huh. Oh. There you go. Oh, nope. Too much pressure on the system. This is something that should have only been kept on the PS4 Pro, but nope. It came to the Switch. Oh, that's the sort of thing a witch would do. Burn the witch! But, all right. Hang on a spike laden pit. Oh, little boy, don't you know the spikes have no purpose for that? I guess, unless you drop her into the pit? She's just supposed to hang up there until she, like, starves to death? Yeah, I'm with you, Preacher. He spoke a little too much. I'm sorry, I forgot both your names, but we're going to work that out later. Oh, oh, Edward. Sorry, Eddie. I forgot your name. You are a very memorable character, and now you're green. Okay, be gone. Bubble away. I am not a witch. And he smiles knowingly. At this point, when it asked me to save, I was like, oh, exciting. Maybe I get a little bit of discussion right here. I can choose whether I live or die. But this is not Phoenix Wright. I have no lawyer representing me. I just have Dr. Danny, who's going to just kind of salivate about my peepers for a little while. Let's see, Cliff Notes version of this. Huh. It all started in the therapy room. I have been assessed with peepers for the longest time. I collected all of them. Blue, green, brown, black, red... Glass? Fleshy? All of those eyeballs. But none of them were able to capture the beauty that she had. After I removed all the eyes from the other victims, the eyes looked dead. But her eyes looked already dead. So that must have meant they wouldn't change at all once I ripped the matter of her face. 
and so she drove me to insanity because all I wanted to do was lick her eyeballs for eternity in my room. And so she's, she's a fixin. She made me stray from my true calling. And so there you go. He now has Implicator making her sound all the worse. Oh, buzzkill Ray. He was so excited. How are you going to respond, Danny? Oh. Her soul consumes others. This is where things get a little interesting because what does that even mean? We already know that Ray has some sort of secret, but what exactly is is that I am assuming at this point that she in some capacity murdered her family at least one of her parents I don't know the other extent of it but of course something traumatic happened and who knows it would explain a lot of her reason why she needs to repent and that kind of stuff but we'll see if it really is that she is this kind of sinister being, I love that twist. That'd be pretty darn cool. And hopefully that can change my perspective on things. Again, I'm not too hopeful because the anime didn't do well either. And I thought I was pretty well um, animated. I need to go back and watch that. But we'll see. Okay. There you go. He's going to provide the final sentence. Let's see. Sorceress. She's been called a lot of things. I guess witch and sorceress are kind of synonymous. Is that the, what they used in Harry Potter? I don't remember. Whatever they used is probably the right one. Oh, tricking her. It's farted and transferred by your spell. Yeah, he needs to talk this one up a lot too. So, we're going to let him. In the other episodes, I kind of gotten to the point where I regret not having all the action sequences however mild they were at least with the previous floor there are activities to engage in this floor is entirely composed of dialogue of course I kind of wandered the floors for a bit trying to figure out different things but they they weren't that intensive in action I collected a few hands I shot a few guys and I had to run away but each of the running away sequences was going in one direction. There wasn't even variety to it. And I know I've talk, kind of crap talked the others because they weren't much puzzles to begin with. But hey, they were something. But Jay's going to burn right now. And just die. The sacred flames sanctify you. Again, this is all hallucination. So you're wondering how this is actually going to kill her. Unless you can overdose on the drug somehow. I still don't understand the full reason for this drug and what it does. All I know that if you cut yourself, you snap out of it. So, there's that. But, pretty sure if he was dead on marketing this to the public, he'd make a pretty penny. I, I could see that. You illicit drug. And have endless conversations of people being like maybe we should legalize all drugs I don't think it's a problem once you have the government regulating it it'll all be fine yeah I kind of represented that side poorly I have a point I don't know this is not a drug talk thing we're going to keep that for another video uh, it simply cannot be God doesn't exist how how can I accept it? He says he's God. He is wrong. What a pompous prick. For a second there, I thought he was like some kind of Satanist. But in reality, he kind of just seems like an existentialist. Saying that he's God because he creates things as he wants it. He does seem full of himself, but he doesn't really have a cult of any sort. So he's, I guess, reserved in his being full of himself. Who knows? What's this? What's this? There's something in my back. <gasps> it's something precious to me. Oh, you broke and ruined it. It was your friendship. All this time your friendship helped you. And it was good for you. Oh no, it's a knife. Sorry. 
That makes a lot more sense than friendship. Well, just let that know. The next time you're in a big anime fight, friendship is not the key. It's sharp objects that will win in the end. Okay, you grab that knife. It's cold. Her descriptions are just delightful. Are you ready for this? It hurts. It's chipped, yet it cuts so well. Ah. Well now, my God is here after all. And that's where things get creepy. Oh, she's back in the real world. And he seems slightly disappointed. So, she's at peace. And he's kind of like, uh, okay. I'm surprised. Like, I don't, I don't know what he hoped to accomplish. Would he actually try to save her or would she die in that? Would he make her repentant? Oh. You are trying, you're finally understanding her true nature, preacher. Ooh, cutscene. Yeah, you hold that knife against his neck. That's a good show of force. He will never hurt you. Down, preacher. Bad preacher. Y you keep saying that. But this entire time, preacher, she has not been fighting for herself. She's been fighting for Zack. I know you can construe that like she wants Zack so she gets what she wants. But you're right. At the end of the day, she could just kill herself or have someone else kill her. And you're like, eh, whatever. Okay, let's get up. Let's get the medicine. At this point, I was very much just ready to steam throw th steamroll through it. As I said earlier, I think in my last video, I just wanted to get to the end. I'm trying to figure out where that is. And I should know by now that each floor is probably going to take an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes to complete. That's the size of each of these episodes. And... I don't know how much this changes, and I don't know kind of the across what time these were created. Was this a span over years, over months? Based on the repetitive gameplay, I'm thinking that they were pr released pretty close to each other. And this is a free software where people are able to make their own games. I at least think it's free. And so there's not much time to create levels of improvement. And I would say overall, this episode is weaker than the previous one, which wasn't immensely good, but it was at least progress. So we're going to go back and help out Zach again. And it's going to be the exact same thing that we saw last time, where they're just going to talk to each other for a flipping long time about friendship and distrust and mutual killings. And then she says something really, really weird. Yeah, we'll get to that. I don't want to spoil it. I've given away so many spoilers already. That's just not fun. Oh. Look at that. She was looking at him quite pensively. How quaint. She has a crush. She's all beat up. Now that makes me wonder, again, what was happening in her hallucinations that made her beat up? Because this is pretty sure this is child abuse, and Preacher should not allow himself to think that's okay. I know Preachers have done worse, but that's a really dark comedic pathway that I do not want to take with this video, lest I draw more criticism than I need. I've already brought up drugs, I don't need to bring up religion to a greater extent. Whatever. Okay. They're going to talk a lot while she's almost about to stitch him. This is personally my favorite time to talk about people is when I'm getting stitched up and my stomach is there. Just hanging out willy-nilly. This knife cuts like a dream. Answer me. What is it? ding a Sack. You're my god. And Zach kind of takes it in stride. Eh, as well as Zach does take things in stride. Just kind of lets it go off. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could let that go if I was Zach. At that point, I'd start to wonder if this relationship is one I want to keep, or at least one I want to keep stable for a while until I know I can run away and she's not going to break my ankles or anything like that. Ten points for whoever understands that reference. Three, two, one. Ding, ding, ding. You're right. It is Stephen King's Misery. Also adapted into a wonderful video or movie starring two people whose names I don't remember that were really good at their jobs. One of them won an Academy Award for it, I think. They were good. I don't know their names because I suck at that. Mm, James Kahn? Maybe. That's his name. And the other girl who's a great actress, but she's never really the lead role. She's always supporting, so she's awesome. Kind of like John Goodman. I knew his name. Anyway, she's still working on all that fun stuff. Oh, my goodness. We know you two like each other. Go rent a floor and have whatever good a time you want to have. There's at least some pews here. I don't know where any of the other people sleep. Maybe you can find their living quarters and, you know, just shack up for a night. Or however long that takes. So. But now we'll continue. We're going to move on into the future. Go, Ray. Go. Go, go, go. So. This time I knew that we were reaching the end. But you got to stop every once in a while to talk to each other. I uh, didn't think so. That man, I think he may have a soft spot for you. Barf! You know, that's how queasiness works. When sappiness comes, a person vomits. Oh, gotta make sure that that does something, Solomon. It doesn't. Hint. Oh well. I'll learn one day that I don't need to check everything. But it's my natural tendency to do that. I want to be able to collect everything so I don't learn halfway that there was two potential endings and I didn't get the good one and to truly appreciate the story I actually have to experience the real ending. That's just a lot more work than I ever want to go through. So I do like the concept that Zack's all better now that I've given him a medicine and stitched him up. Technically he's still lost all that blood that he dribbled out to this point so he should not be in ship shape. But who knows? Maybe he's a blood factory and can just produce that. He'd be a vampire's wet dream at this point with how much he still creates in his system. Ugh. But we get some more backstory. Some cute little interactions where we learn that Zack had an even sadder life story before this all happened. And how he got his bands. Again... This, his kind of backstory sounds an awful lot like any creepypasta you find on the interwebs. Not a good creepypasta. But we live with it. We move on. We feel good. And we love life. Just as we all should. <laughs> oh. Look at that. You wrapped her in cloth and threw money at some shitty home and left me there. Very tragic story. But again, it's, you need some visual impact for this. And I'm not a big light novel person. I did play through some of the Higurashi light novels, and I thought they were rather good. But they also had more character to their creations. It's still, apart from that room that Zack stayed in, there hasn't been anything else that's created such a lasting impact. And Ray is a totally unlikable and empty character. Like when they describe her as dead, they are just 100% correct. She does nothing else. My God. So. We'll just continue this. We'll figure it out. I don't know how I'm going to do the rest of the movies. Again, I think in 40 minute things could be great. I'll still probably narrate but I think we can experiment with the concept that 
I just talk at the beginning. I don't have to do the whole darn thing. And if you enjoy it, you can watch the rest. That may be a good idea just so that my voice isn't absolutely destroyed talking into this blue ball snowball microphone, which is good. I give it my recommendation. I sound so much clearer, like I'm actually with you, sitting beside you, watching this video together. I think that's where the true love lies. So, we're going to set ourselves up for the next episode. Oh no, you can't tell him, Ray. If you do, he will hate you, and so will God, and he's God, so he will doubly hate you. Oh, a big thing to say, Ray. Big thing to say. But let's see ya. Keep going. But now we find ourselves in a house. A house that's probably much like where she was living. Basement one. We must be close to getting to the end. <gasps> there is hope for us yet. Ha-ha! So, we set ourselves up for a big cliffhanger. And we'll see. But thank you for bearing with me. I'll see you next time. And until then, well, bye.